Bethesda's QuakeCon 2020 at home this year went live this past weekend and there's plenty of highlights for Fallout 76. Here's what you shouldn't miss. Hello, hello everyone, welcome back to another Fallout 76 video. Things have been chaotic in the wasteland since update 21 went live last Tuesday, with so many rising problems and hundreds of complaints all over social media, I actually decided to stay away this time because no matter how much I wanted to turn the situation around, I just couldn't. I started testing the patch and yeah, it's a complete mess. Plus, I I just returned from holiday and I felt like diving into so much negativity in a dozen of new issues wouldn't be a great start. Anyway, and moving on, QuakeCon 2020 went live with a new format and dozens of hours of online show. I can't say it was easy to select the following highlights, but I think that sums up all the important reveals Bethesda announced at this event for Fallout 76, which, by the way, you shouldn't miss. So, without any further delays, let's get right into it, shall we? Alright, let's start with the most recent upcoming content, the new event, A Colossal Problem. During QuakeCon, several devs did the event together and they officially revealed a few details about this new experience, which you probably know about by now if you watch spoilers or if you played in the public test server. So Bethesda mentioned that A Colossal Problem has quite a lot of lore attached to the new event, there is a new mission and and the monogam mine has a new location underground, you will need to nuke the mine to start the event and access the interior of the monoga mine. There's quite a few notes at the entrance of the mine to give you a more in-depth idea about what's going on there. They didn't spoil too much, but the story is related to the Earl, which is the Wendigo Colossus boss and his daughter, who became a cannibal and, well, terrible things ended up happening, as you surely can see from the gameplay footage here. In the end, it's not just a new event that is going live, it's a lot more things attached to it, and that's great! The Colossal Problem event is also introducing new combat mechanics by allowing players to come up with new strategies, such as using objects as cover more often and surviving a chaotic environment with dozens of enemies spawn at almost any time, really. But there is more. They also reveal this is an 8-player dungeon event. It's not clear if only one single dungeon opens when a nuke drops and 8 players is really the maximum or if multiple dungeons open up and well everyone has a chance to participate in this event but just in batches of eight per dungeon so there are rumors it's the first there are rumors there is the second devs didn't specify anything and to be honest with you, when I played in the PTS, we were always between 4 to 6 people per event, so I'm not sure how this rule works out exactly. I just hope it's not uh, one dungeon, 8 people, and that's it, because it's going to be another huge issue, because, you know, the server has over 20 people, most are high level, and if only 8 can get in, it's not very convenient, is it now? But yeah, let's leave that issue for later when the event comes live. The next reveal is about the Wendigo spawns, which have a chance to drop the ammo type you shot them with, once you kill them of course. This new feature intends to help you refill your current ammo since the boss is like a bullet sponge and requires a lot of ammo to kill. It's a really nice touch in my opinion and I actually didn't notice this while testing, so good to know, indeed. I'm sure you are thinking the same, huh? Now, the spiral drill in the boss room will quickly kill you if you come close to it. For example, if your character runs into it while in panic, you are most likely dead. 
There are other environmental things in the room such as falling rocks from the roof and ground acid which can easily kill you if you run into it, especially in panic which means you have no access to controls and yeah, you will just take free damage and eventually die. Moving on, there is an industrial chest with loot at the entrance after killing the Wendigo Colossus, so make sure to grab your extra loot before exiting the mine because there is no going back once you are out. The event rewards are similar to Scorch Earth with some stable flukes, 200 caps and surprisingly, a treasury note, hmm, the highest from all events until date. You can also earn a few unique plants, such as a Wendigo Colossus plushie and a rug, which is massive as you can see. It looks really badass though, it's kinda like a trophy for the floor. Oh yes it is. Lastly, there are new legendary weapons that can drop from this event called Cursed. This legendary effect gives you improved damage and attack rate at the cost of low durability. As far as I know, they have a low chance to drop from the loot chest inside the mine after the Colossus goes down, of course. So once again, don't forget to loot it when the event goes live, of course. It's probably the only way to get random cursed weapons and eventually roll the one you want. Ay 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 caramba, mod support, where, when? I feel like this topic is timeless and once again without much of a proper answer. This time Bethesda claim they have been working on the mod system and they have in fact invested a lot of resources already on mod support. They also said they have been evaluating the structure of how it will work compared to Fallout 4. No date or further details were given though. They told the community to stay tuned for more news and that's pretty much it. I would say there's hardly any news but A, something is surely better than silence, don't you think? We finally got a word about new display cases. Bethesda revealed that two different display cases are on the way. Yes, you heard me right. They even went into details on this one and ensured that mannequins are really coming, so you can fully display costumes, hats, masks, and so on. They also mentioned a power armor display case is on their release plans. Now, both items are part of the game files for a very long time, according to that the miners. So let's hope Bethesda will find the time to finish the coding to integrate such items into the display case models so these new cases can finally make it to the live servers and find a new purpose other than just existing in the game files. Well, 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 Bethesda revealed that Fallout shelters are coming this fall as planned and the system consists of a shelter door that will load into an instance. In other words, your new home will be a small bunker. This closed environment will increase your building possibilities, it will lessen the building restrictions and it will give you freedom to build more and more. Bethesda hinted that the ability to build more will come from a larger budget to start with and from less strict building rules as well. After all, this new housing system won't affect other players as much, so there's room for more diversity. Bethesda claimed you can go nuts in there because they no longer have to worry about NPC rules and frame rate as much, for example. Now, I am wondering something here. Will you have to choose between having a bunker or an open world cap? Or will you be able to have both? Maybe this shelter thing will be for Fallout First members. I don't know, it sounds too good to be true if each player can have two camps, you know, one outside and then a shelter. Mm, what do you guys think? Do let me know in the comments below. Do you remember when Bethesda said the camp budget was going to increase before the Wastelanders went live? I surely do, but so far nothing. And their evasive reaction in QuakeCon suggests that the camp budget will remain the same. 
They basically said fallout shelters will solve the camp budget issues since the interior camp system will provide a much larger budget than outside camps. But again, can you have both camp types? Is the budget shared? Too many questions, too little answers, sadly. If you love to play different characters, then this one is for you. When asked if the character slots will increase per account, Bethesda said maybe. There are no definitive plans for more character slots per account for the time being, but there are upcoming features that will offer more flexibility, such as more building options from Fallout Shelters, new skills from the legendary perks, and even more utility with the perk loadouts. So, the need for more characters will naturally decrease with the upcoming features. Bethesda also said they will evaluate the community feedback after all these features go live to see if players still want to have more character slots with all of the new content live and running. Let's see how things go. Perk loadouts, another timeless topic, I would say. About this one, Bethesda basically said we are still working on it. I am that serious. After several delays and endless update requests by the community, Bethesda still didn't give us any new details. I think they are having technical issues, judging by the lack of news, which is quite shocking since there is a third-party perk loadouts mod that works pretty well and it's live for over one year and a half now. I really wonder when will this feature become official? Well, one can hope, right? The Brotherhood is finally returning to West Virginia, and despite all the data mine lore already, here's some official news for you. So, the Brotherhood is coming from the West Coast, they are the original Brotherhood of Steel folks, and they have traveled across America to find out what happened exactly. But A, they also have their own mission and their own agenda, so don't forget that. You will get to know several new characters pretty well, and they track across the states. Why are they here now? What do they want? And a lot more. It's all about the mystery. Hmm. According to Bethesda, there's plenty of cool story elements in coming with the new DLC. It's a very character-centric update with a lot of lore and some drama in between. Oh no, what's going to happen? Hmm, I can't spoil you, can I? Dawn of Steel will also introduce new armor and weapons. I like that very much. As well as a couple of minor allies with daily quests. Sounds promising indeed. The fourth DLC will get released across several patches instead of all at once like it happened with the Wastelanders DLC. Oh yeah, thank you for that. So let's wait and see what's coming next. The map expansion is a hot topic and a frequent asked question during events. This time Bethesda revealed that yes, there will be new locations to explore in the future. Bethesda said Fallout 76 is so big, we got a lot of space to play with in there. We are experimenting with allowing players to do one-off mission off-site. However, there are technical hurdles there, so we have to decide what's more important right now. It's only a matter of time though, they are working on it and according to Bethesda, this feature will be a huge lift that should come with the Brotherhood of Steel next year. I suspect they were talking about the upcoming expeditions system, but only time will tell. It would be nice if they created a new map or some sort of dungeons that are not exactly in West Virginia but around the area. I don't know, anything new sounds very nice and is very welcome in my view. Now, let's talk about the One Wasteland. This system will be quite complex and the enemy level balancing rules won't always be straightforward, especially when it comes to bosses. Bethesda is trying to keep boss fights challenging and they don't want every single enemy to immediately go down to your level. As such, bosses will have special rules. 
For example, there are two ideas for the Scorch Beast Queen right now. She might keep her level altogether, or she might level down to a certain level, but never lower than that. Each region will have their own level down rules and caps as well. For example, if you are a low level player and decide to adventure into the Cranberry Bog, enemies won't exactly downgrade to your level, they will come down to a minimum level and that's it. There is still a limit to establish region difficulty. Bethesda also mentioned that they don't want everything to just get right to your level. No, no, no. In fact, certain creatures might not auto-level down at all. Their main goals with the one wasteland is one, to create a more predictable experience by eliminating the difficulty spikes in the different regions, and two, to allow different level players to play together in a more balanced manner. And that sounds great, let's just see if they can put everything into Protec, you know, one thing is theory, is the concept, is the idea, the other thing is how it all plays together, the flow, the gameplay, you know, will it work? I hope so. The new Daily Ops feature will be based on Vault 94. That's right, it will become a new daily location and the experience will be very different than the one we had with the weekly missions in Vault 94. It will be more focused on the store and lore. Actually, you can go inside anytime and freely explore the vault without doing any missions, if that's what you want to do. This will be part of the initial package for the Daily Ops system in the future, Bethesda wants to extend Daily Ops to Vault 96 in a similar format, but it's still in the list for future content, so we still have a long way to go until we get to 96, it seems like. Fun fact, did you know that the Overseer was initially planned to be controlled by devs as part of a rare event? Yep, right before the Wastelanders, that was the idea, as Bethesda shared during QuakeCon. Anyway, as you can imagine, the concept was clearly not sustainable since there are a lot of servers and Bethesda's team is rather small. If that had gone forward, most players would still never seen the Overseer until date. Thankfully, they ended up turning the Overseer into a main NPC with her own location and her own unique questline. That's a much better alternative and we should be glad they went for it instead. Will Fallout 76 become free to play? Hmm? According to Bethesda, that's not happening anytime soon. According to them, the game is doing really well on all platforms, so for the time being, the game will remain pay to access. The Atomic Shop will most likely stay as it is as well, with the same entry and price structure. However, they do still plan to organize free weekend events every now and then, as it has been happening so far, pretty much since the release date. Lastly, we have a sensitive topic. You should expect more delays to come from Bethesda, and probably not only for Fallout 76. Remote work has been a huge challenge for the company. The pandemic has affected their yearly schedule, but Bethesda claims they are adjusting really fast and things are running forward as intended. However, their content calendar is far from being on time. Moreover, the pandemic is far from being over, so expecting more delays is common sense in my view. It is frustrating and disappointing, that's true, but it shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone at this point. QuakeCon 2020 was extremely confusing and extensive in my opinion. I might have missed a few things here and there across the three days, but hopefully nothing major. These are my 15 highlights for Fallout 76. I hope I could keep you up to date with the latest news. Do let me know which reveal was your favorite. I am Marta Branco, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. You can also support me further if you want, just check the links below the video. That's going to be everything for this one. I will see you all very, very soon in the next video. Until then, take care. Adios. Bye-bye.